So, you wanna ride a Harley Davidson? Catch you inside. Revelator Alf. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alf. Hope you enjoy the channel and this series of videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share, and check out the website revelatoralf.com. So, Harley Davidsons, how to ride them. This is a Sport Glide 107. If you watch my channel, you'll know that. Okay, just a quick run through of the uh, controls, and then it's really going to show you on this uh, video what the kind of differences are between Harley Davidson's and conventional motorcycles, if any, and uh, some of the things that you'll need to look out for. Okay, so just a quick run through here rear brake, rear brake, uh, front brake here, front brake, and on the left side, gear selector there clutch here handlebars here for steering right get on it flick the ignition switch on there pull the clutch in fire off the uh, starter button here add a bit of throttle here this is throttle right so what's the purpose of uh, the clutch here so the clutch is basically just to disengage the engine which is running from the gearbox because if the engine was permanently connected to the gearbox uh, what would happen is as soon as you fire off the uh, starter uh, then it will try to propel the bike forward which is no good also uh, there won't be enough engine power to reach the higher speed so you have a series of gears in the gearbox from low to high and then the clutch enables you to disengage the engine and then slide over the gear selectors within the gear, for want of a better word. And then you'll be able to release the clutch, re-engage the engine, and then you're riding at a better gear ratio. So that you'll go from slow speeds to high speeds with essentially the same amount of power delivery from the engine. All fine and dandy. Right, you've got the handlebars here to steer left and right, lefty lefty, righty righty. And uh, now as you're riding along, you'll probably do a little bit more leaning left and right. You could adopt uh, what are called counter steering. So if you want to go around a right hand bend, you'll actually push forward on the bars just a little bit. And that'll actually act to tip the bike to the right so that you'll end up leaning to the bike and go around the bend. If you want to go around the left bend, you push forward on the left slightly and then you'll go over to the left. Okay, so to ride the bike, just like on a bicycle, you're looking down the road. Here, clutch is pulled in, gear selector, push down. One down, five up. It could be four up, depends on the bike. Add a bit of throttle, release the clutch a little bit here, let it out just a little bit. Waiting for the bike to want to move forward, add a bit of throttle, and then you're releasing the clutch, add a bit of throttle, keep on looking forward, you lift your feet off the floor, onto the foot pegs like that, and then you're steering it as you're going along. Now add a bit of throttle as you want to increase the, uh, uh, the speed, you pull in the clutch, lift up the gear selector, and then release the clutch, and then you're in a higher gear, you add a bit more throttle. As you're riding along here, you can steer left, right, left, right, if you want to. But as you're going at higher speeds, you may want to do a counter steering, which you push and it will go on the left. You push right here, pushing right, and you'll go right. So that's it, that's counter steering. Push left, you'll go left. Push right, you'll go right now. It, this is all very basic stuff. This is no different from any other motorcycle. Now, if you want to stop the motorcycle, you apply front and rear brakes progressively at the same time, pull in the clutch, add a bit of brakes, you start to slow down. Once you almost start to slow down and stop, you put your foot down, increase the braking pressure till you can come to a complete stop. Right, off we go again, release the clutch, add a bit of throttle, foot on the pegs, gradually release the clutch until you're rolling along. All right, let's turn this around. So, release the clutch, add a bit of throttle. Now, slow speeds, you can steer with the handlebars in the conventional sense. So you, you just move it to the left and then straighten up and you can go lefty, lefty, righty, righty. Uh, as you speed up, you can lean 
left lean right or you can adopt that counter steering as well uh, there are lots of other techniques as well but those are the basic ones just to get yourself going so to change gear you pull in the clutch flick up the gear selector and then add a bit of throttle release the clutch and away you go if you want to change down you pull in the clutch roll off the throttle knock the gear selector down add a bit of the throttle release the clutch and away you go in a lower gear so it's you're constantly maneuvering the clutch to change gear adding a bit of throttle or releasing the throttle to uh, control the engine power so anytime you want to change down or change up you just roll off the throttle pull in the clutch at the same time change gear and then release the clutch and add throttle at the same time there we go now this is no different from any other motorcycle okay uh, modern motorcycles some have what they call dual linked brakes where you either push the front brake uh, or the rear brake and it will operate both brakes front and rear at the same time some motorcycles have uh, automatic transmissions yes uh, just like in cars where you just twist the throttle and it will just change gear as you're going along now some small motorcycle scooters have little hamsters that are beavering away behind the uh, engine cowlings beneath your seat and it's all elastic bands and trickery uh, which keeps the engine running and the motorcycle or scooter moving forward yes i jest but uh, essentially there there are various different designs but essentially it's a way of engaging the engine to the gearbox of sorts and then you're just riding along added a bit more power you're steering left and right and controlling the clutch if you will and the uh, brakes to make it want to go and make it want to stop all great uh, you might say right so what's the difference uh, between a conventional motorcycle let's say and a harley davidson you got a new harley or you're thinking about riding a new harley well what's the difference well one of the first things that you'll notice is the seating position or the riding position is quite often different harley davidson's have basic two standard uh, riding positions or foot positions you can have mid mounted controls which are conventional they're back down there uh, or you can have forward mounted controls which I have which are a little bit set forward so you're almost in a bit more of an armchair position relaxing these are generally regarded as cruiser motorcycles so you're in that kind of cruiser frame of mind now the other thing that is really noticeable about a Harley Davidson of sort is the engine sound and the engine power delivery. Now because they have V-twin engines, the engine sound is a lot more noticeable. Uh, you have more vibration, let's say, uh, although that is a lot better these days than conventional motorcycles. And there is a kind of a walloping of the uh, the engine as it uh, goes through. It's uh, pushing up big pistons left and right or forward and backwards, depending on which type of motorcycle that you have. So there is a bit more of a sound. There is a bit more of a, a rumble. There is a bit more of a vibration. This is what endears Harley Davidson's to many riders because of that feeling, that kind of raw feeling that you get from riding it. The other thing is that uh, they tend to rev lower uh, than conventional four-stroke uh, four-cylinder engines, let's say, uh, which tend to be a little bit more higher revving and quicker revving. But the power delivery on V-twin engines, let's say on a Harley Davidson, comes from the lower revs a lot more than on uh, conventional motorcycles. Now, that doesn't make them faster at all. No, no, it doesn't. In fact, many people regard Harley Davidson's as being a lot slower but the gearing allows you to go longer in the gears without having to change the power is there so you can stay in a one gear or a higher gear for a lot longer whereas on other motorcycles especially smaller cc engines uh, you tend to have to change gear a lot more often so this more a, a more relaxed way of riding a more lazier way of riding in many ways However, in terms of motorcycle controls, they're all exactly the same. You're going to have to find some way of switching on the bike, uh, either by key or by a kickstart or by a push button. 
you're going to have to find uh, some way of engaging the uh, the engine or disengaging the engine from the gearbox and that's with the clutch they're all the same there you're going to have to be able to stop the bike with the front brake here and on the rear brake which is down there and that's all that's all you're doing that's exactly the same for all motorcycles the geometry on harley davidson's is slightly different usually uh, they're a little bit lower they're a little bit more longer wheelbase they're more for straight line rather than bends however they have dramatically improved in recent years so they kind of whilst they don't match sports bikes let's say um, or other types of motorcycles from other manufacturers in the bends they are a lot better they do handle really well they you are in a more relaxed riding position you're more comfortable so you're cruising around they're good for touring motorcycles as well however other motorcycle manufacturers do make good motorcycles for touring as well that's that has to be said so when you ride a Harley Davidson, you're tending to ride at lower revs. You tend to be a lot smoother uh, with your gear changes because it kind of lends itself to that style of riding. Now, this does not mean that you can't ride a Harley Davidson uh, quite aggressively. Of course you can. And it doesn't mean that you can't ride them quite fast. Of course you can. But but it's a different power delivery profile it's a different riding experience from let's say sports bikes the suspension is different the the geometry is different you know they are designed for the open road let's say more so than on the racetrack you can't really lean them over as much as let's say a sports bike they don't have the ground clearance let's say that an adventure bike has so they're all different but fundamentally the operation of that bike is exactly the same it's just that it's a different style not only looks in appearance but also the manner in which you ride it you've got longer gears and you've got uh, greater latitude with a power delivery there's more torque there for, per se in the lower gears and the lower rpms uh, than on conventional motorcycles you tend to feel it more you've got more of a raw emotion a raw, more of a raw connection uh, with the bike now that's not to say you're not going to get the same kind of a thrilling experience with other motorcycles absolutely not i'm not saying that at all but there is a difference when you're sat on this kind of harley davidson let's say with forward mounted controls you are more relaxed your attitude changes you tend to ride more slowly let's say more smoothly it's about the pleasure of the ride rather than just getting somewhere as quickly as you can a race bike you're more in a prone position you're more leant forward it's like you want to get on it whereas in a harley that doesn't tend to happen so how do you ride a Harley Davidson? Well, you ride it in exactly the same way as you'd ride other, other motorcycles. It's just a different feel initially. It's just a different way of adding the power. You can start rolling along in first and second gear and you're hardly adding any revs at all. So it's, it's more of a fine control just to cruise. Whereas on a conventional motorcycle let's say and I use conventional in the broad sense of the word in terms of British bikes uh, Japanese bikes so on and so forth you don't need as much power because there isn't a great deal of power to give and you're not going to go fast because these motorcycles don't go fast in terms of the engine revs and also in terms of the gear ratios as well these motorcycles are designed to cruise and cruise in comfort and cruise in a leisurely way now as i say you can ride these hard you can open up the throttle you can you know give it the beans if you want to but once you give it the beans it doesn't deliver the same power and the same riding experience let's say like a sports bike does or even an adventure bike to a certain degree you know it's it's a lot more relaxed it's a lot more progressive and smoother harley davidson's and cruiser motorcycles in general do get a bad reputation from those who don't ride them most notably and uh also i suppose within the uh the harley davidson cruiser world as well there is a uh, lots of criticism because there is lots to criticize about in some regards 
but in terms of the way you ride it and the style of riding you kind of have to go in eyes wide open you have to be able to acknowledge that you're going on a Harley Davidson or any other manufacturer of a cruiser motorcycle and that's the style of riding that you want you want to be able to take in your surroundings you want to be able to cruise around you want a more leisurely ride and every now and again give it the beans of course but you just want to adopt that style many people that say will get on a Harley Davidson and criticize it oh, for being too slow or it's this or it's that it doesn't go around a bend and it's oh it's rubbish and it's the wheelbase is too long and the rake is this and the trail is that what did you expect that is a Harley Davidson that is a cruiser motorcycle that is the style there's no point in complaining about something it which is doing what it's supposed to be doing that's the job now you either like that or you don't you could say it's not for you or not but that's the reality of actually riding a cruiser riding a Harley Davidson some are better than others not all Harley Davidsons are very good at all some are very light some are really heavy and cumbersome some you'll need to possibly be a taller rider to uh to control it uh, properly uh, others you can be quite short and uh, still ride them uh, really well some have a really wide profile uh, let's say the big Toro motorcycles some have, a, some have a very narrow profile like the sportsters some are good for uh, initial riders uh, starting riders uh, let's say like the sportsters the 883 the street you know the 750 the 500s which are you know soon to be no more but you'll be able to pick up these uh harley davidson's on the used market uh some obviously are more for more uh experienced riders that have a greater power delivery and also they're heavier so there is a motorcycle there is a harley davidson for any level but it really depends what will suit your style and also what will suit your experience level as well if anybody was coming to me as a brand new rider who's just taken their test or taken their license or just passed their license and they said i'd like a harley davidson the first motorcycle that i would always steer them towards is something like a sportster an 883 something that's light something that doesn't have a tremendous amount of power but also it will give them that, that kind of initial uh blooding if you like into the feeling of riding harleys then the second thing i would say is don't buy a new harley davidson i know dealerships are going to hate me for it but don't buy a new harley davidson buy a used one because you're never really going to know until you start riding it on a regular basis if it's the kind of motorcycle for you and also if you've got any experience of riding motorcycles uh, at all you'll know that your first motorcycle you tend to outgrow quite quickly it's a great starter motorcycle but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a great motorcycle once you've got a lot more experience or you might go a little bit faster or you might want to go on longer journeys so there's you know there's lots of things to consider for being a uh, a new rider on a new harley davidson which is going to be the right one for you a lot of the enjoyment that you'll get out of riding harleys is actually based upon the expectation of what your experience is going to be the function of the motorcycle the uh, the operation of the motorcycle is exactly the same as uh, all conventional motorcycles you have a clutch you have front brake and rear brake you have a, a gear selector gear shifter uh, with your left foot there you have the steering uh, you know done by the handlebars all the counter steering all the leaning action you know it's exactly the same as all motorcycles there are just slight differences in how the power is delivered how your uh, how you feel on the motorcycle the the feedback from the road and the engine all these things add to the immersive experience of riding a motorcycle but also how it slightly differs uh, between riding let's say a Suzuki for example and riding a Harley Davidson it's a t it's a different experience and one experience will suit one particular rider more than another no better no worse just a different experience some people will like it some people won't so as you go around a bend you can add some throttle increase the rpms go a little bit faster 
but it won't be the same acceleration as another motorcycle it'll be more progressive it'll be slower yes it'll be more lethargic in many ways but you can still achieve higher speeds uh, on a Harley Davidson just like any other motorcycle you can't compare them to the sportier versions because they won't go much faster than let's say 110 120 uh, with an unrestricted uh, mode that some of them can come in you've also got to look at whether you're buying a brand new Harley Davidson or whether you're buying a used one as well what the differences are going to be what the older Harley Davidson's will be they will be a lot more vibration they'll be a lot more clunkier uh, they won't go round bends as good but they will they'll still go round bends of course but not as well as the, the newer motorcycles because technology is changing technology has improved hasn't it you're never really going to know until you get on one yourself you manipulate the controls in exactly the same manner you're going to be rolling on the throttle rolling off the throttle in exactly the same way applying the brakes whatever but you're going to be riding the Harley Davidson or the cruiser in a cruiser kind of mode you're tending to want to slow down a bit be a little bit smoother and every now and again yes of course add a bit of power add a bit of throttle go a little bit faster but that's not really what you're getting into a Harley Davidson for if you really want high performance high power uh, high speeds and a different riding experience then you really shouldn't venture this direction in the first place choose the motorcycle that suits the riding that you want to do that's the first thing go test ride it go experience it see if you like that kind of riding experience and the way the motorcycle feels the way the power delivery uh, is uh, transferred from your right hand and the twist uh, throttle here twist grip uh, to the rear tire is that the kind of thing that you want does it feel right is it well balanced is it uh, heavy or light uh, do you feel it goes around a bend sufficiently for your riding style all these things uh, matters and choose the motorcycle for your riding experience anyway hope you found that useful don't forget to subscribe like and share check out the website revelatoralf.com and i'll catch you again on another video now i need to go and do some other kind of choppering stuff catch you again ta-da